Hi and welcome back to the Designers Creative Studio. I'm Theron Skies. I'm so excited today to introduce my webinar. I primarily talked about my own career journey with the goal of showcasing many different ways that you could find your dream job in the themed entertainment industry. So let's get right into it. So why did I create the Designers Creative Studio? Well, look, I really wanted to inspire, educate, and guide everyone who's passionate about themed immersive experiences. Uh, there seems to be a lot of people out there because um, I, I get a lot of feedback about that and a lot of questions. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to be in multiple forums where I'm able to discuss this and educate people. So today in the webinar, I really wanna review how I got started in this industry and really kind of the journey that my career has taken. There are so many uh, different entry points uh, into the industry and various roles that are possible. And uh, I really wanted to leave you with the idea, hopefully you'll walk away with the idea that determination and passion will give you a long career uh, in your dream job. You really need to just be dedicated and passionate to it. So my journey really began in film and TV. I started with scenic painting, sculpting, and, uh, and moved into design. Um, what may surprise you uh, is that I really was self-taught. Um, my journey started, uh, I was quite young in my early 20s, and um, every different job that I had was, uh, it was, it was new. I had never done it before. So I tell many people that I spend uh, most of my best work, uh, the work that I'm the most proud of or feel the most rewarded by, is when I started a job and I was 50% terrified and 50% excited out of my mind. So one of the things that I had to do was to evaluate, learn, and implement really quickly. Um, and that cycle started uh, in the beginning for me, and it just continued all the way through my career, every new role. So I just wanted to encourage you, don't ever be afraid of just jumping in. Sometimes committing to something and the pressure that puts pressure on yourself to perform, and it actually causes you to, to kind of perform at a level that maybe you hadn't before. So one of those jumping in moments, uh, literally, uh, when I was trying to break into the industry, came from HBO Pictures. I got a, a call from them out of the blue and wanted me to come and be a scenic painter on the film that they shot in, uh, probably nobody remembers this, in Florida. Now this was at the height of Hollywood East in Orlando. Universal had built the studios, Disney had built the studios, and, um, and I just kind of out of the blue got a call. And uh, on this project, I learned from the master scenic artist and sign painter. Her name was Joanne Brown, and she was amazing. She, that uh, relationship led me to a couple of other different films. Uh, this one was Psycho 4. A, a couple of things that were really cool, I'm a huge Hitchcock fan, so being able to actually retouch and, uh, and paint on actual props that were used in the original Psycho was super cool, very big nerd moment for me. And then the Psycho house that you see um, at Universal Studios, it was brand new. It hadn't actually been painted before. So uh, my, my paint team and I, we got a chance under Joe's direction to paint this whole thing for the very first time. So that was just super cool. Um, and then, of course, that led me to some TV work at Universal, this little show called Superboy. Uh, really fun. I uh, was there for two seasons. I was a uh, lead scenic artist on one of the seasons. One thing about TV, it was so fast-paced. Holy smokes, there was just no downtime. You only had five days in between shooting schedules, and there were so many times that we were on the soundstage building a set uh, while they were filming. So the bells would go off and everybody would stop and freeze, and then uh, you know they would shoot, and then we would go back to sanding and painting. It was, it was absolute mayhem. But that, that really uh, uh, helped me to, to really plan and schedule work and people and understand what it would take to get that done. Uh, the other big thing uh, was really my sculpting. I, I was just sculpting uh, all the time in foam and fiberglass. And um, another, that kind of led me to another film um, that you may have heard of. It's Stargate, the original with Kurt Russell and James Spader. Now this was super cool because this was a feature length film with some A-list talent, and we, um, that wasn't really impressive to me. What was cool is we got to build a whole city in the desert. So this Egyptian-style city that we got to build in, um, in um, Arizona was quite amazing. Now I was there for five weeks and I lost uh, almost 15 pounds, but I got totally hooked on this grand scale idea of sculpting, something really huge like that. Well, naturally, that led me to theme park work. And one of the, uh, the very first theme park job I had was at Universal Studios Florida. 
I was hired to lead the project to build all of that artificial rock work around the lagoon there, the very center part of uh, Universal. Never did that before. Uh, this was steel and cement. It wasn't foam and it wasn't film. It wasn't something that was going to get chainsawed and thrown in the dumpster or recycled. Uh, it was a theme park. It was so much more of a permanent medium. Um, one of the greatest things about working here was first time I'd actually taken um, this project from a model, scaled everything, and uh, formed all of these shapes and everything from from scratch. It was pretty amazing. I also had the incredible honor of working with a gentleman named Jolt Horme, Hungarian guy, and uh, incredible uh, sculptor. And he and I became fast friends. And he now is the executive lead at Imagineering for all artificial rock work worldwide. I'm sure there's uh, you've seen uh, much of the work that he's led, the Tree of Life, beautiful volcano caldera in Tokyo Disney Seas, Cars Land, Star Wars, etc. So um, that is really an important thing, uh, point that I wanted to make is that you don't ever burn a bridge, right? You, you foster every relationship because it'll always lead somewhere really important. And in this case, it led to Euro Disneyland. How about that map, huh? So Jolt actually called me. It was perfect timing. I just finished um, another show uh, in Orlando, and he said he needed help in Paris with the rock work. And uh, it was perfect timing for me, so I said, you bet. Uh, packed up and relocated to Paris and got the opportunity to work on one of my favorite attractions, Pirates of the Caribbean uh, in Paris. Um, super cool. And then, um, as luck would have it, uh, they needed help on Big Thunder Mountain on the weekend, so I was able to do that, which was actually pretty cool. So this was my first overseas experience ever as an American, but also as a worker. And it really taught me a lot about working in different uh, cultural idiosyncrasies, just the different uh, ways of doing things, different languages. And all of that was wrapped in an incredibly insane schedule. I mean, literally it was 15, 18 hour days, uh, six, sometimes seven days a week. So it was all about learning fast and adapting. and. Um, and it would be another six years before I ever worked at Imagineering again. But uh, what was so cool uh, about coming back to Imagineering in 1997 was uh, literally, uh, uh, that was the, the, the last time that I really kind of consulted or worked anyplace else. Uh, Imagineering became my home and I've been there ever since. What's amazing about Imagineering um, is that they really invest um, a good amount of money in the level of detail and storytelling. It really is a part of the brand. So working for a company that has kind of that level of standard really pushes you to be excellent in every level of that detail. You know, to, to deliver these kinds of stories, these kinds of dimensional environments, it requires a diverse, very highly talented and motivated team and you're consistently, you know, w when you consistently build the impossible, that doesn't happen by accident, right? You have to wake up every day and have purposeful intent for what you're doing during your day. And I think that is one of the biggest takeaways of working with Imagineering that I have is um, being purposeful and really loving what you do. So that first job in uh, 1997 was with the Disney MGM Studios. Don't see that logo around much anymore. Um, and this was um, a position I held for nearly eight years. I had the opportunity to work on a whole bunch of different uh, projects within that time period. But one of the key learnings that I had uh, from this uh, work was that it was really my education in how to operate a park. I never really worked with ops like uh, some of my colleagues did before me. You know, you hear these great stories of of uh, senior executives now that started scooping ice cream on Main Street or, or in custodial or working in a retail shop. And that's a really great experience for them because they understand the inner workings of that. I never had that. So being able to work on you know, amazing large and small projects was, was really helpful. But one of my key takeaways was learning how the parks were operated and maintained. And really it, it helped me to understand what guests want it helped me to understand that when you design something in, in a theme park or an attraction, hotel, uh, retail dining and entertainment venue, and even on our cruise ships, that you're, you're designing for the frontline cast as well because they actually communicate that message to guests. Um, another big thing I learned here was partnerships, um, how to build trust. 
uh, because we were a park that was based on studios, we did an enormous amount of work uh, there on all kinds of different film and IP um, intellectual property, and that gave us the ability, gave me the ability to lead several different um, experiences where we took something right off of film and built walkthrough attractions or displays or um, even museum experiences that were all making of. And that was really cool, um, even into big uh, attractions like uh, Lights, Motors, Action, which isn't there anymore, strangely. That's how they say, you know, you've been with the company uh, a long time is when they start tearing down things that you worked on. So uh, I have that experience now. Uh, one of the other really cool things at the studios is that we pioneered quite a lot of new different uh, new design technologies, uh, such as these large-scale printed cycloramas at the Streets of America. Um, I was able to reuse that in, in Paris later on. And we worked with, I, I got a chance to work with a lot of different brands like Starbucks, uh, designing and building uh, the different Starbucks locations uh, at Walt Disney World. Uh, really amazing to work with another powerful brand like that and discovering the, the best balance uh, for the two. Here is one of my uh, most favorite experiences of working at the studio is Tower of Terror. Worked a lot at Tower, reprofiled Tower multiple times. Um, got to become a partner with a really good friend of mine, Michael Schantz, who you see in the background there, looking equally devious uh, as me as we were um, messing around with Tower of Terror and uh, uh, building different profiles. Uh, spent a lot of time there. And I think that was the key thing that led me to uh, be chosen to return to Paris in 2006 and expand the Walt Disney Studios Park there, not only with Tower of Terror, but we got to build this enormous, amazing Hollywood Boulevard and a, a really cool little attraction uh, called Stitch Live, which was sort of like Turtle Talk with Crush, uh, except it had five languages. Wow. I know Paris doesn't do that anymore. They've been able to reduce that down, but uh, that was a huge challenge, a live performing um, uh, attraction that was done in five languages. So w one of the key takeaways here was about um, different building types, different building codes. Um, in, in the US, we build things stick built, right, out of steel. We put it all together like a big erector set. In uh, Europe and even in Asia, it's just not done that way. Um, there's a really great time lapse video of Tower of Terror in Pan, uh, Paris being built. You guys should look it up on YouTube. But literally, it's just a form that would pour the concrete, and it looks like it just grew out of the ground. Totally different approach. Uh, leading and managing an international project was so good for me. Um, it, I learned so many different things because you're working with so many different disciplines and you're in a foreign uh, a place. You're in a, a culture that you have to tell relevant stories uh, in that culture or guests won't get it, right? Um, it also helped me to determine the difference between WDI project work, Imagineering project work, and Imagineering uh, local team or park support work. And, and that was really good. That led me to uh, four years in Hong Kong Disneyland two years in Paris, four years in Hong Kong Disneyland, 2008 to 2012. And uh, wow, what a doctorate level uh, learning experience in Hong Kong. Uh, Asia is a totally different culture than the West. And um, you really, again, had to learn quickly and adapt to tell relevant stories. Um, I took uh, really a leadership role of the, of the park uh, creative aspect of Imagineering leadership at the resort really only three years after the park was open and my main responsibility was to create an Imagineering creative studio team that would really be um, uh, set up and ready to grow with uh, the resort, right? We were adding um, lots of attraction work including a Grizzly Gulch, Toy Story Land and Mystic Point. Um, but another really great opportunity presented itself, and that was working with not, not only the Hong Kong government, but working with multiple universities, I believe it was 12 universities, to really help that culture understand that creative roles um, are regular professions. Uh, they, they, they're equally as important as uh, business degrees and doctorate degrees, which at the time, uh, um, that mindset in, in Hong Kong, and I think it was pretty much throughout Asia, that uh, you had to be a doctor, a lawyer, and, and the creative professions are what you did if you, you know, you had a hobby. So we worked really hard to change that mindset and um, Imaginations, which has been around for almost 30 years, I think, in the U.S., uh, we took to um, Asia and made it Imaginations Asia, Imaginations Hong Kong. 
and that was amazing. We got to really recruit um, um, a lot of students, uh, really got to kind of build this uh, culture within Hong Kong. It was really cool. So my key learnings, again, as I mentioned, is really relevant stories. Telling, creating and telling relevant stories for different cultures is really good because it causes you to examine how you tell stories. And if you think about it, Hong Kong really was the first generation of, of primarily Chinese, but mostly Southeast Asian audience to visit a Disney park. And um, in as much as they were learning how to do that, we also as a leadership team um, had to teach uh, a whole lot of leaders that were Asian who had never really worked in a Disney park before. So maintenance and performers and designers, how do you um, deliver a Disney experience consistently? And that really had to be taught. So uh, that was an amazing experience uh, for me to uh, create um, uh, this team and to build this team. Lots of education, lots of teaching, and uh, I think that really solidified my love of mentoring and teaching people. And uh, it just goes to, without saying, if anybody, any of you haven't been there, Hong Kong is the most amazing Magic Kingdom in my opinion because you've got behind Fantasyland these beautiful green mountains on one side and on the other side, because it's on Lantau Island, you have this, the, the South China Sea, just gorgeous, uh, beautiful, beautiful location. So after my time in uh, Asia, I actually repatriated back to the U.S., uh, arrived here with my family on a Friday and started my first full day on my new job, uh, new project, Disney Springs, on Monday. So uh, many people said, you know, don't complain, you had two days to rest. Uh, and, uh, and it's really true. Um, of course, I made trips back and forth uh, to, to help get things started, but uh, it was jumping into uh, a fire. It was absolutely amazing. Um, creative was already behind when I started. And um, I think the most amazing part here was because we were early enough, we could really build the whole team from the beginning. Um, it was by far and still today the most complex project in my whole career. Um, the majority of the experience I guess we're going to have at Disney Springs, and if you've been there you know, is all third-party tenants. And each third-party tenant, uh, over 90 of them, had their own design firms. Each of them, of course, had their own brand. They had their own marketing firms. They had their own construction firms. So coordinating all of that uh, design and construction, along with all of the other scope that we had to do uh, from a Disney perspective, was, uh, was huge, huge task. Uh, my team was four creative people. And of course, we worked with um, project delivery and, and architecture and design and lots of different disciplines. But uh, my team of four uh, reviewed everything uh, with uh, regard to the design uh, and with all the tenants. So that was pre-concept all the way through to ribbon cutting, all the press releases, everything. We had massive uh, expansion of over a million square feet. We had highway work like you couldn't believe, road work. Uh, just, it was amazing. Just think about the signs that we had to change. Thousands and thousands of signs all across Walt Disney World property that used to say downtown Disney. We had to change all of that. So some key learnings. Doing a lot with a little, right? Choosing the right team members. You can really use uh, lean techniques and management and a very rigid design uh, process and you can uh, handle lots and lots of work with that level of team that's really inspired. We also got to leverage technology, which was key. So for example, I always tell people we literally pre-visualized every aspect of Disney Springs, every tree, you know, every lamp, uh, I always say every manhole cover. Um, we really literally did that so that we could have complete control over the environment and see everything uh, before it was actually built. We had to because we had to sell that to tenants. So um, that was amazing. Distilling the design approach for the property was also uh, incredibly important because you had to say, we don't, we, none of us could lean on the traditional Disney aspects uh, of, the, of this property. We couldn't, it couldn't be Mickey or Minnie. The tenants told us that. Um, we don't want uh, Goofy dancing out in front of my retail store. We can't do that. So we had to distill down what the Disney experience was into a design approach and, uh, and make that happen. That was really cool. Um, and then really listening to guests. There was so much information that was given to us uh, from marketing and from operations um, that was actually verbatim. Guests had actually said, we want more shade, for example. We were able to take that and build our design criteria out of that. 
and it was actually this was a criteria we had to achieve and it was exactly what the guest said I really loved doing that because it it let you know that you were really delivering what the guests wanted and after all that's what we're here for right we're here to uh, ensure that the business is successful to tell a great story to make emotional connections and to um, deliver on guest expectations so uh, my Current job is with the Disney Cruise Line. Uh, super exciting opportunity. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever cruised with us before, but uh, it's one of the most amazing Disney experiences, uh, certainly that I've ever had. Uh, four ships in the existing fleet, the Magic, the Wonder, the Fantasy, and the Dream. And um, when I uh, took over this role and took on the portfolio, it was really cool working to refurbish each one of these ships to um, look at the different uh, time periods in which they were designed and built and uh, being able to uh, kind of add new uh, restaurants and retail and different design aspects to keep that experience alive and fresh was absolutely amazing um, and very, very, very different. As I mentioned, the running theme, I think, in, in my career journey is that every new opportunity I have was brand new and this was one of them and it was unlike anything I'd ever done before you know, building an actual vessel that is that is a used for transportation that has a hotel component, a dining component, a retail component, entertainment, attraction. It has everything um, and it moves too and it has very specific code. It was a very, very different approach, but I'm so proud to have followed in the footsteps of some real giants that went before me, Wing Chow, Jolene Cicero, you know, I mean, some, some really great um, leaders who just kind of blew the lid off the industry uh, with Disney Cruise Line and then having it be a 20 year old business Disney Cruise Line hard to believe it was really fun to go into designing uh, the new ships uh, three new ships as you know um, the Disney Wish was the first name that's been released super excited uh, about all the work that's going on there and to be able to look at the business from the last 20 years and make uh, improvements and to uh, employ new technologies and we have a whole lot more IP now than we did back when the original four ships were uh, created so being able to lean into that has been uh, a really amazing experience I can't wait to see uh, them on the sea and sailing and I personally can't wait to actually sail with them so what does a 23 year career look like uh, especially with Disney well one thing is true you get exposed to a lot of different opportunities uh, press, uh, media, radio, national and international TV series, you know, every single opportunity reminded me of how special my role is. And more importantly, it reinforced to me how much the guests love the experiences that we create. So keeping in perspective the re responsibility that we have to deliver excellence every single time was really, really important. One of my key takeaways is that people look up to you. When you create things that last for years and years and that millions and millions of people uh, get to enjoy, um, it, people look up to you. What we create is important to people. You know, escapism and play is an important part of the human experience. And themed entertainment design plays a hugely important role. It's way more than a job, way more than a job. It's really important to enjoy what you do. I, I say this to people all the time. I say this to team members. And when I'm mentoring people that project life and themed entertainment design is way too challenging way too dynamic to just do it as a job and I would submit to you that you you really wouldn't be very good at the job if you just approached it that way so um, you should really absolutely love what you do and um, you should never stop uh, having fun and being curious and learning uh, that is I think the most critical part of all so let's get to the Q&A. Um, hopefully I can get through uh, as much as I possibly can. There were uh, quite a few buckets, uh, a lot of questions about uh, COVID-19, um, some questions for um, career-related questions, and, and then some uh, specifically for me. So let me take a couple. So a lot about COVID-19, and we're all kind of uh, in that bucket right now, right? We're all in that challenge. Um, I think what the future of the industry looks like, uh, you know, people were asking, is it long term? How do you stay motivated uh, when you're working from home? Um, you know, that COVID-19 has changed me. People have different said, di uh, differently as said. And, and I think, look, one of the things that, that the industry needs to look at is um, touchless technologies. 
um, which I think everybody is doing right now um, in, in all kinds of industries, cleaning, uh, distancing, all those things I think are really, really important. But the reality is, is that we, we won't, the industry I don't think is going to have it figured out until um, they do just exactly what I was saying, right? You have to evaluate, you have to design and try something, and then you have to adapt. And once uh, the industry goes through several of those cycles, I think they'll have best practices and they'll be at a place where um, be a lot more comfort of opening back up. I would really suggest that we look to Asian cities, right? Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong. These Asian cities have been working with viruses for years, and we were over there. It was the bird flu, um, swine flu, you know, SARS. Um, that's some very uh, bad diseases that have gone, viruses that have come through there. And um, there have been very successful things that have been done and some not so successful things. So I think we as an industry need to look broadly and take best practices from wherever we can. Uh, one of the other things here was, you know, how do you enter the industry and join, uh, how do you think about that now as a student, or maybe that's, that's your career objective when we're stuck in the middle of COVID, right? I would just say, define what your passion is and then pursue it. I think, I think you have to know what you want to do with your life. What's the thing, you know, you ask yourself this radical question, what would I do if I didn't, if, if making money wasn't required and I, I didn't have to pay my bills <laughs> and that was all taken care of for me, what would I do? What's my passion project? And whatever you fill that blank with, that's really what you need to do with your life. And, and don't worry, because as you pursue that, you'll be so good at it that um, uh, you'll, you'll end up making a really good living at it because you'll be great at it. You'll love it. You'll pursue it. You know, I think that, that um, the best skills that you can have are teamwork, partnership, and the hunger for learning. Um, you, you never will start in any industry and do so instantly and jump right into... Um, uh, this illustrious career immediately. Few, few people do that in any industry. So give it time to, for you to learn and for uh, you to adapt. So let's look at some career-related questions. Um, somebody wrote here that uh, you said having an understanding of story is critical, even for technical people. As a technical person, how can I better understand story and incorporate it into my work? And my answer is that story really is basic uh, communication tool for humanity. There's lots and lots of books on uh, the value of story, so you could certainly read and, and learn those. But the basic, the basic value, um, I, I would establish story as a first step in anything that you do to the design process. It really allows partnership uh, with the creative team and lots of carryover, a crossover throughout the project. Uh, one of my favorite things to say is that story is the vehicle that can deliver the business goals of the project, right? That's where we start. We understand what are the business objectives because uh, this is all about business. This is not art uh, per se. We're not creating something out of our soul and hanging it in a gallery and the value is on the creator. This is a business and we're creating these environments uh, that guests want to go to. So I would definitely say that story is the uh, method for understanding the business objectives wrapping it around those objectives and being a tool that, that every single member, every discipline can, uh, can get on board with and, and deliver that project. And, and by the way, story actually makes an emotional connection with your guests, with your visitors, and that means that they want to return over and over. So I think story is, is really critical. Um, and even as a technical person, you understanding the fact that anything that we do in themed entertainment is based on a story, um, even books, uh, you know, about uh, economy being based on experience, right? The experience economy is really about everything, retail, dining, uh, any of those non-traditionally themed uh, businesses are now looking to story to deliver an experience because they know that that works. Um, so another question, what makes a stronger candidate uh, trying to enter the industry, one that has a few specialties or somebody who's a jack of all trades? There's no pat answer for this one. If you are, for example, an illustrator and, and you love illustration and that's, that's what you do, a graphic designer, and you just love that, it's totally fine to be a subject matter expert, somebody who literally um, is an expert in that field. 
And um, this industry does allow for a lot of crossover. Um, a lot of um, graphic designers at Imagineering that I know of have transitioned to become art directors. That role leads them to creative directors and then they're over large projects like that. That takes a different mindset. That takes a more of a jack of all trades mindset um, where you are interested in many different things and you take all those different things and you blend them together um, and that gives you the ability to speak many languages, for example. Um, I like to see jacks of all trades, uh, uh, nothing against a subject matter expert. Everybody uh, you know, has, a, has their place, um, especially in the, in the project team. And there's, I think, going to be plenty of room for uh, all of those various disciplines. But the one thing about a jack of all trades is I would love to have that influence everybody is the understanding that there are multiple disciplines, right? Technical, non-technical, project delivery and creative, uh, architecture and show. And understanding how to communicate well with all of these different uh, uh, divisions will really help you in um, your career. Uh, you not only be able to uh, create the best possible product experience within your project, um, but it'll help you make some uh, really important relationships uh, as you go through that career journey. So maybe I'll pull a question here uh, specifically from me. Um, that was, how much time in your leadership roles in the industry was dedicated to mentoring and teaching your team? Look, I think that mentoring uh, and teaching is a natural part of leading. You know, offering, offering the, the value of my experience, which is success and failure, to those who are open to receiving, it only makes the team stronger and, and the company that you're working for better. Um, I, I do think that that's natural uh, outpouring of what you do. Preparing the next generation of designers and creatives and leaders is critical. You know, just leaving them to find it out on their own means that we don't really care about what we're creating today, right? Because Cinderella's castle, what's the lifespan of that? That's forever, right? So the next generation has to understand the story. You know, you look at um, uh, Hogwarts, right? You look at Diagon Alley. Right, you, the, Universal will want that to stay uh, magically telling stories for now for the next 50 years. So uh, imparting those stories, imparting those lessons, and teaching them to the next generation is critical. Um, let me look here. Uh, da, 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 da. So what is some, I like this question, what is some advice you would give your younger self about the industry? If you could go back and do things differently, is there anything you would have done differently? And, and I said, no, I don't really have any regrets about the way uh, that I, I came up through the industry, being self-taught and learning. Um, I, I feel great about that, uh, actually. I said, I don't have any regrets. And I'm, I'm confident in the way I balance my life and my work. Um, if I were to give my younger self any advice, I would have warned him that the industry is way more political than my idealistic younger self would have ever imagined. Probably true with every business and every industry, but it, it probably wouldn't have changed much, but at least my younger self would have been a little more prepared and not been so disappointed in the sometimes paralyzingly poor leadership uh, that my younger self encountered on the journey up. Um, so mu many of us just want to have fun doing a great job and and unfortunately, we are in a position oftentimes where we, you know, as a part of understanding how to uh, work with team members and other people, we often encounter people that um, have motivations that are very different than our own. And, uh, and I think that's what I would have told myself. Uh, another question here, and possibly the last one, was how do you stay motivated? Um, it was a great question because it was, you know, when you're working on a project, do you ever feel like you're, you become unmotivated? And um, I, I say to about myself personally, um, there's not times where I become unmotivated, but there are times that we get bogged down in problem solving. And sometimes the challenges are so great um, that you have to find the light at the end of the tunnel. You have to lean on your team members. You have to remember the vision that you set for um, this process and, and you can't give that up. And I think that's why establishing a story and mentoring and being close with your teammates and building a team that you know you really feel is unstoppable that is the way to to make it through so as i wrap up look i just wanted to remind you to please go to my website and subscribe um, you'll find lots of different resources there i am releasing my first class next month 
and it's titled How to Work in the Themed Entertainment Industry. And the idea behind that is it details the whole industry, the processes for delivering these amazing environments we've been talking about. It goes through all the different disciplines and roles of people that work on the, on the projects and in the industry. And more importantly, what you need to know to be prepared to do your dream job. Now my blog will also start next month and that'll have regular installments answering your questions and discussing uh, issues that are critical to the industry. There's a lot of questions here that I didn't get to so I'm gonna be posting a lot of those in the blog. I've got a lot of content in the pipeline and my hope is that it will inspire, educate, and guide you on your career journey. So I really, uh, I really hope you guys would check it out. And I hope that you've enjoyed my webinar. Um, it was really just a, a chance for me to kind of reach out and um, you know, speak to everybody. I've spent uh, quite a lot of time talking with students recently, which has been a real blast. Um, different groups. Um, I'm actually going straight to a design competition with the Savannah College of Art and Design, where I'm, I get to be a mentor and a judge, which is really cool. And um, I just want to encourage all of you, you know, don't give up. Um, just because the industry looks kind of bleak right now, uh, there's other times that the industry has been in this place, right? I think of um, 9-11, uh, it, it was a pretty bleak place. 40% uh, of our staff in Orlando got laid off. Um, it was, it was um, uh, tourism dried up and for the industry in general, it was a tough time. And um, you know, a lot of people uh, just you know, kind of put their shoulder to the wheel, so to speak, and, and continued plugging through. Other people went out and started their own companies. It's a time to, to really grow uh, personally. And I think that time uh, is very much like right now. You do see a lot of people that are growing themselves and are learning. And um, don't be afraid to try new things. Uh, all of this is new for me. And, um, and I, I really hope that you got a lot out of it. Um, I wish you guys all the best in your career journeys. Um, I will definitely be coming back with another webinar, uh, maybe closer to the beginning of next year. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if you subscribe, you can send questions to me uh, all day, every day. I'm totally fine with that. I will be doing a Q&A session and posting it to a YouTube channel that I'm creating, so I'll be able to give um, uh, those answers kind of in that format. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed my video. Please make sure that you give me a thumbs up and subscribe below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.